All right, since I have this nice new uh, instrument here, I thought I'd readdress uh, a video that I did a while back, which was on um, variable capacitance um, diodes used in like voltage control oscillators and stuff. Um, so they're called varicaps or vera, uh, varactors. Uh, they're, they're, they're specific diodes that you use whose whose capacitance changes with bias voltage. And you can, a poor man can use a, uh, a 1N4000 series part. I think of 1N4000 series, the, the capacitance has to do with how big the junction is. So I think the larger the uh, diode, the more capacitance and anyway, this is a 4001, so it's a very, a very generic part. So we're going to measure the capacitance of the, uh, of the 4001, all right? So uh, let me do some setups here. I'm on internal triggering. All right. So uh, it's not measuring anything. It's got negative, negative nanofarad. So it's not, it's not measuring anything at all. If I put it in uh, forward biased, it's the same thing. So we're not getting any um, capacitance on that diode because it's uh, not doing anything. But we need to put charge into it. And when you put charge into it, then you can get a separation and it kind of acts like two, two electrical plates and stuff. And anyway, it's, it's more complicated than that. I always do things in simplistic terms. But um, let's go ahead and turn on some reverse bias, okay? Um, let's see, I think we can do it from here, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to put in some reverse bias. I'll put in one volt of reverse bias and I'm going to turn it on and suddenly we get 21 picofarads. All right, so we put bias in that capacitor um, and caused there to be some uh, potential and causing uh, charge and voltage and capacitance are all related and, and so you get capacitance. Um, so if we change the bias current, right now I'm putting um, one volt across the diode in the reverse direction, okay? And you don't want to bias it forward, that wouldn't do you any good. You, you bias it in the reverse direction. If I increase that to uh, two volts, you can see we've dropped. So it's opposite what you think. The more voltage I'm going up to five volts now. Now we're down. We're now we're down to eleven picofarads. So, the more voltage, it kind of uh, 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 separates things, and it looks like having two plates get farther and farther apart. Anyway, um, it's like I said, it's more complicated than that. But what I would did, <laughs> what I wanted to show today, long way around. What I wanted to show today is that this machine can give you a cool graph. Okay, it can't graph it here on the screen. You have to go to you have to go to Excel. But what you can do in your in your measurement setup, you can do a a uh, a list. Now I showed a video where I changed the frequency. You can sweep a capacitor for frequency, so you can create a list of a whole bunch of frequencies, and um, then it will test the part. Well, uh, let's see here. Instead of frequency, we can sweep level, which is how, much, how big of a signal do you send through a capacitor um, in volts or in amps. But there's a more key, and then here's bias. You can do bias, volts, amps, and DC, I don't know what that is. So anyway, so we want to do bias. So we're going we're gonna to do a whole bunch of measurements with different bias voltages. You can go down to the first entry in the uh, table here and I'm gonna put in zero, zero volts. I'm gonna start at zero volts, uh, zero volts, okay? And then I can go to the next entry and I can just say fill linear. And what it does is it automatically fills the table up in linear steps, uh, next page, next page, next page. It has 201 points. So it's gonna take those 201 points and it's gonna take my starting point and it's just gonna fill in the table. And so at um, 201, it stops at 40 volts. So that's the maximum capability of this machine, a 40 volt uh, DC bias. So I'm gonna sweep from zero volts to 40 volts automatically, all right? And the way that I do that, 
um, is to do a display format. Um, you need to first set the uh, triggering, triggering to manual, all right? And then when you go to uh, the measurement page, you do a list sweep, okay? And then when you hit the trigger button, uh, it's automatically going through all of those different voltages and filling in the table, all right? And then uh, it takes a while because there's 201 points, but it's doing every 0.2 volts. So when it did its linear interpolation table thing, it, it said, ah, I think 0.2 volts fits just fine. So it's going from zero volts to 40 volts in um, 200 millivolt steps. And uh, there you go. How, how, how nice is that? It's all automatic. You can then download that into a, uh, into a thumb drive and go off and uh, plot it. And which I did. Uh, so here is a plot. So this is a zero volts to 40 volts, and this is picofarads, zero, five, 10, 15, and 20. So when we have one volt, it doesn't work below a volt. You need at least one volt of biasing. I found that out with this diode. You need at least one volt of biasing before the thing works, before it becomes a capacitor. And we're up here around 22 picofarads. And then as you go from one volt to 40 volts, uh, the picofarads drops to something like four picofarads. So it goes from 22 to four. And it's in a nonlinear fashion. And I'm sure there's a bunch of math behind uh, the shape of that curve and everything, which I don't know what it is. But anyway, there you go. It, it, you, can, you, can, uh, you can do these, these tests automatically. Really nice having a machine like this. I mean, you could do it manually and write everything down. It would take you forever. Um, now, the machine that I've got uh, the reason I'm making this video is, is I'm trying to learn my new machine. Um, it has the capability of DC biasing, but I don't think it's internal. I think I have to hook up a power supply to the back panel, and there's some switches on the back panel that enable DC biasing. You can see it right here. It says DC bias, um, and there's a switch for it here, but um, you need to input those voltages from the, from the, from the rear panel. So in the days when this was being used, you would write a, a program with an HPIB control. You would control the um, power supply and control the uh, measurement device, and you would write a, 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 a you know a for for an X loop and da, 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 and do the whole thing in basic, and then plot it out. Um, and I'm not going to do that. <laughs> Maybe someday. I don't know. Um, anyway, it does have the capability of HPIB control, of course. Um, but anyway, I thought I'd do a short little video today on uh, measuring capacitance of uh, Varactor diodes uh, using a nice machine that has a DC bias on it. It's automatic, and uh, you can uh, characterize all of your uh, characterize all of your diodes. I was going to characterize a Varactor diode. I have a couple of them around the garage somewhere, but I couldn't find them. But um, I know these work just fine. I've used them in uh, circuits before. Um, so yeah, there you go. Thank you.